Hi there, I'm Panzer, and in today's video, we're going to go through 10 tips that you should learn if you're a new player in Hunt. We will touch on some baseline mechanics, handy tricks, and basic information that may not be entirely obvious to a new player. If you make it to the end of the video and find that you already knew all of the tips, let me know in the comments because I have a challenge for you. Additional tiers of this style of content will be coming out soon, for more advanced players. If you can make it through all of these videos and not learn a single thing, well you're clearly a top tier hunter that should be way up in 6 stars already. So without further ado, let's get right into the first beginner tip. After attaining 1000 XP with the combat axe, you will unlock throwing axes. These are known to be an essential piece of utility and in my opinion, every loadout you make should include them. But did you know just how effective they really are? Well by default you get two of them, and with the trait Frontiersman you get three. The axes themselves are capable of silently killing all of the most common AI in their default weak spots. For example, grunts are a one shot to the torso and head, hives to the torso and head, armoured to their head or exposed body seen here, and they can two shot Constantine or armoured in the same locations, I meaning you don't have to lose any bars of HP when facing them. Oh, and it's an excellent ranged weapon for players too. We all know that choke bombs are yet another essential piece of equipment. Its main usage is to put out fires on your friends from a distance, but did you know it can also be used as a makeshift smokescreen due to its visual distortion? It can also remove poison from an area, making it viable to pass through, albeit at the cost of accuracy due to choking. But what if you want the effects of the choke bomb without the choking? Well this is no problem, as the initial explosion of the bomb is larger than the resulting cloud. Meaning if you want to revive a friend after extinguishing them, simply throw the choke bomb so that your teammate is on the outskirts of the explosion, and boom, you just silently res your team back into action. Running low on ammo and can't find an ammo box or packet? No problems. Try to locate a weapon dropped from an enemy player upon death or as a world spawn. If a weapon on the ground uses the same ammo type as your weapon, pick it up and then pick yours up again. The pool of ammo will be stored and you'll have your trusty firearm back in action. When bleeding, you can often panic to reach a safe spot and patch it up, but don't ever use the hold F to bandage option unless you absolutely have to. Instead, use any healing item, excluding regeneration shots, to both heal you and stop the bleeding once the animation is finished. This works best with medkits as they both heal you and stop the bleeding from the start of the animation. The medkit method works for extinguishing fires as well, as you can see in this example clip. When spawning into the map as a new player, you can often be caught off guard by nearby spawns. Always be aware that players could be spawning at a mere stone's throw away from you. A generalisation is that players will spawn on exiting roads around the border of the map, however this isn't fully accurate. To understand each spawn without experience, you can use handy websites such as hunt-map.info to learn all about the maps and spawns. The link to this website is in the description as always. Enjoying the video so far? I'd appreciate it if you left me a comment or like to show your support. Perhaps even subscribe if you think I've earned it. Right, enough of that, let's get right back into the video. Many people will be overwhelmed by the not so perfect UI and the vast amount of items you will collect throughout your hunts. Well if you want to look for certain things such as your owned weapons or weapons that utilise specific traits, simply type owned or the name of the trait into the weapon search bar to see relevant options for you. Speaking of weapons, if you're new to the game and want to get a quick overview of some solid weapons to start with, here is a few of them. For medium to long ranges, a martini is a simple long ammo rifle with plenty of shots to put down range. If you want to do more spamming or fancy yourself as a headhunter, the recently buffed Winnie is an excellent choice with a greater effective range and again, excellent ammo pool. Reining it into close range will see you utilising many shotguns. The Romero is both simple and unforgiving, so many may be attracted to the rival for its extra shot. However, the rival doesn't have the range capabilities of something like the inexpensive Spectre. And for sidearms, here's a few of the front runners: The Officer, Conversion Pistol, and the Scottfield, especially the Spitfire variant, are all versatile guns ideal for a beginner. Sound is extremely important in this game, and if you want to be the best team in the match, don't make a sound. Many sounds cause more of a ruckus than you think. Here's some of the main sound traps to be aware of. Birds, horses, cages, AI activation, particularly the immolator and hive, running, meleeing, 
big white branches, and that's just to name a few. Here's a simple example of meleeing without the silent killer perk. This causes your hunter to grunt and can be heard from a surprising distance. Removing cages by destroying the lantern quietly does seem like a good idea, however this can also be heard clearly from the same distance as a standard lantern explosion. Navigating compounds during fights is often a tough endeavour, however, you can find that there are many great opportunities to be found by simply assigning a key binding to Vault, as opposed to having it combined with Jump. For example, I have Jump bound to Space and Vault bound to B. This lets me choose whether I want to Jump or Vault. Trust me, you won't think this is important until you have accidentally vaulted through a window you meant to Jump peek. Ok, so here is the final tip, and it's about penetration. No, the killing enemies are making them angry kind of penetration. Anyway, many of your common wooden walls and general soft material surfaces can be penetrated with little damage reduction, so long as you are using medium, long or FMJ rounds. As for compact ammo, it's a different story. Although it can penetrate through wood, it can only do this at short ranges, and the damage reduction isn't so forgiving. Shotguns aren't excluded from this mechanic either, as they have impressive damage through soft surfaces, however, you must be within your shotgun's functional distance to output reasonable damage. Do keep in mind that FMJ rounds with compact and medium weapons retain the same penetration values as standard long ammo, that is before damage fall off, making it highly valuable in PvP as it's typically lower in cost. So there you have it, 10 tips for beginners to jumpstart your hunt journey. If you learned something today, I'd appreciate it if you let me know in the comments as I read and reply to all of them, and it would help me produce better content for you in the future. If you didn't learn anything, we'll also drop a comment because me and you have a bet to settle in my next videos. So stay tuned for more tips, tricks, guides and clips. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck out there hunters.